Today, I'm gonna to show you how I light the foreground in my astrophotography shots. Sometimes when shooting at night, you'll find that you'll be able to get a really good exposure on the sky, but then when it comes to the foreground, it'll be flat, dark, or noisy. You can take one photo for the sky and another for the foreground and then blend them afterwards, but whenever I can, I like to get everything in one shot. I'll basically use a torch, car headlights, or any other light sources that are available. If I've forgotten my torch, I've always got the light on the back of my iPhone. Now, this is the torch that I use. Now, the light source doesn't seem that big, but there's a technique that you can use to make the camera think that the light source is actually bigger. So I basically light paint my foregrounds. The process is fairly straightforward. Basically, you set your camera up to a long exposure using the 500 rule. If you're not sure what that is, click on the eye in the corner. You then get your torch out and then start painting in the foreground. There is a lot of trial and error with this process. Sometimes you'll spill too much light on the foreground and it'll be overexposed. Sometimes it'll be patchy, where you won't have an even light source on the foreground, and other times it'll be a little bit too dark. However, as you gain experience, you'll learn what works and what doesn't. You want to look for textures and details that you can amplify with light. I'll normally start by shining the light on the foreground for about five to 10 seconds even if I'm doing a 30 second exposure. And this is where you have to experiment. Basically, you want to balance the ambient light with your torch light. As I said, these light sources are really small. And if I take a photo and just hold the light steady, that's the size of the light that you'll get, which will produce a really hard, sharp light. If I move it around, this will then give the impression to the camera that the light is a lot bigger and longer. And this is how you get softer light. Another way that you can make the light source bigger is to bounce it off a surface. Sometimes I'll shine it directly onto the floor just behind the camera, and this will give the impression of a really big light source behind the camera. Basically, you're following general lighting principles. The bigger the light source, the softer the light. The smaller the light source, the harder the light. So when you're shooting, make sure you've got lots of time to experiment. Try the lights at 45 degrees, Try them at the same angle to the camera and try coming around as far as possible, as well as shining down or shining up on the subject. Lots of different things can produce very different looks. So I have a few different lights that I use. I have this one big torch, which is quite bright. So when I turn it on, it does chuck a lot of light on the subject. So what I'll tend to do with this is shine it for a few seconds and turn it off. I then have this, which is a little dimmer, and it's a very yellow light. That produces a very different look. Then I have a head torch, and this is really bright. And sometimes you can take quite unique shots with this, with the head torch still on my head, looking up. And if there's a little bit of dust in the atmosphere, you can actually produce like a strip of light going up towards the Milky Way. Another one that I sometimes use is my iPhone. So if I turn the light on on this, when I forget all those other torches, I'll use this. Now this light is quite green and you can see a hint of green to it now as it's shining into the camera. When I do use my iPhone, I then have to post-process this color out of the final shot. One other thing to take into consideration are the light sources that are at the location that you've chosen. I've been to a few places where there's an antenna blinking on and off and other locations where there's a road running past me. Every now and then a car will pass and shine some light onto the foreground. A lot of the times this can be overexposed but if you're lucky and you get your settings right, it can light it really well. When I'm out shooting, I'll press the shutter button starting the exposure and then I'll paint with my light. This is the shot I got from painting this much light on the ground. I kept it in the same position and it created quite a hard light. I'll typically try different things with different lights until I find one I like. In this location, I was keeping the light low to emphasize the ripples in the sand. This shows how experimental light painting is. With experience, you'll start to know what works and what doesn't. So what you wanna do is just try different things. Get a few torches like the ones I've shown you. Make sure you have your phone with you as well and it's on full charge. 
and just play around with the light. If you fill the foreground with light and it's overexposed, do the same again, but half the amount of time that you've shone that light for. What I tend to do is count the amount of seconds that I'm shining the light on the scene for. If five seconds is too much, I'll do it to two and a half seconds, which is in effect halving the amount of light in the scene. So basically dropping the light by one stop. I'll keep doing this until I get a shot that I like. Then I'll change the composition and start the whole process over again. As I said, with experience, you'll get to know what works and what doesn't. One thing to take into consideration is when you're shooting in a really, really dark area, what you might find is your foreground is lit nicely, the stars are exposed correctly, but then the midground is really dark. As long as the light rolls off nicely into the distance, there shouldn't be too much of a problem. But sometimes you have to be quite creative. One thing that you can do is take a second exposure that's really long, lets lots of light in, so then you can blend this in afterwards and brighten up that midground a little bit. It doesn't need too much, just enough to bring a little bit of detail out in that area of the photograph. And that's about it. There are basically two things that you want to take away from this tutorial. The first one is that you should be light painting your foregrounds. And then the second one is it's all about experimentation. The more you experiment and gain experience, the more you'll know what works and what doesn't. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you next time.